Welcome back YouTubers, so a bit of an update, um, first set of issues, um, last night I went to the garage and I restarted the BMS unit and because the voltage at the time was 74 volts, after a couple of days of not having much sun, so the power wall hasn't charged much, um, I restarted the BMS unit and it didn't turn the inverter back on because the voltage was below 75 volts. So it did what it was meant to do, however um, it was a bit unplanned for last night and it meant that I thought well rather than muck around with it I thought I'd just leave the power wall off last night and yeah it was about 74 volts. Came in this morning and the power wall was at 69 volts or just around 70 volts 69 volts I can't remember exactly what it was. So I thought well, well what the heck's going on did the did it turn back on randomly last night or what happened? So I thought I'd put the multimeter across the power wall and it was reading um, pretty much what the BMS was reading so that didn't make much sense um, so I thought I would um, start testing each of the packs and the very bottom pack this one here is reading 0 0.01 volts if I get this in here correctly you'll see exactly what I mean it is dead and it was working fine obviously last night however at some point in the morning there we go when I get this connection right it pretty much says 0 0.01 um, but it's dead so it was reading what 3.6 or 3.7 volts um, before I went to bed and I woke up this morning and now it's reading zero so obviously one of the cells in this group or this pack there's 34 cells I think in this one uh, one of them is obviously um, died and it hasn't blown any of the, um, the fuses but what it has done um, is obviously drain the pack all the way down to nothing in this, I suppose the, the space of about eight or nine hours. Um, now this is obviously one of the very good reasons to have cell monitoring set up so that as soon as any of the, the sets of packs or, or any of the cells um, in your groups when they start going out of um, out of balance um, in a large amount then you really need to be notified about it um, now obviously if I had that you know potentially I would have been monitored at, you know notified about it one or two o'clock in the morning when it dropped down but either way um, coming into the morning and finding this with zero volts is not a good sign so now I suppose that brings us into a couple of things first of all the fuses that you put in are only going to protect the pack of cells from a, a cell going short circuit that's all the fuses are there to do uh, which is fantastic it's a very important thing to do is obviously put a fuse on it just in case a cell goes short circuit and the main reason for that is is obviously there's a lot of current um, in the pack and you don't really want that current going through one particular cell if it goes short circuit however what a fuse doesn't do is pretty much any other situation that can occur and those situations are obviously if a cell potentially doesn't go short circuit but um, almost goes short circuit or um, gets really high resistance and dies um, it's not enough to blow the fuse but um, it's still one amp or two amps over the course of eight or nine hours um, won't blow the fuse but it will drain the pack all the way down now this is a really big problem and it's something that you can't really prevent apart from setting up some kind of monitoring so that you're constantly looking at each of the packs in your power wall or in, in whatever setup you've got so that as soon as something goes out of balance too much or as soon as um, you have a situation like this you can turn the, the system off and then isolate um, the pack. Now um, I'm lucky because I've only got I've got small pack sizes compared to everyone else. Um, most of my packs are around 32 cells. Um, the ones with the lower capacity cells have got more cells in each of the packs. I think they're about 34. Um, and I'll just quickly count that actually. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yes, yeah, so 18 times 2. Um, so the so my pack sizes are relatively small how so this is potentially going to be easier to diagnose and to figure out which of the cells is faulty than it would be if I had a pack size of 80 cells or 100 cells in a pack you know if I had you know for example this is um, we're getting up to uh, 60 70 cells so if I was to try and 
if the same thing happened in a larger pack, the problem is is that trying to f diagnose or try and figure out which cell within this um, pack is faulty, it would be an absolute pain in the butt. So in some ways I'm quite lucky. Um, it's still a right pain because I, you know, um, trying to figure it out is going to be a bit annoying. But I'm I'm lucky in this in, in the um, in the point that my pack sizes are quite small, easy to work with, and um, I'm not too sure how other people are going to deal with uh, if a cell goes bad and you've got a really large pack size of 100 or 200 um, or you know, 100 and 120. Um, some packs out there are quite large, so if something goes wrong. Um, it's, it's great when it works having a large pack for example you know if you had 40 cells or 60 cells in together that's cool but if something goes wrong it's, it makes it even more complicated or even more time consuming I suppose to, um, to isolate the problem and to fix it um, and there's a lot of cells to pull apart if you if you can't figure it out just by looking at the cell so what I've got to do now really is the is figure out which of these cells is the problem and try and figure it out the easiest way without potentially pulling it all apart. Um, I suppose that, that leads us on to the next point which is um, how do we do that? How do we figure out which cell is the problem cell? Uh, you know, potentially it could be two cells. Um, but at least finding the first one would be a good start. Um, my two thoughts are one, I desolder all the, the, the negative side and then um, do a resistance check maybe across all the cells that might be one way to do it the second way maybe would be and probably the slightly easier way maybe was it's got zero volts right now so how about we throw a charger on it and we try and charge it and one of these cells sh sh should get warm um, they'll either get warm or it'll get hot or maybe the fuse will get hot something like that that might be a faster way to diagnose it without stripping it down obviously the third way would be to completely um, desolder everything or cut the fuses and pull the, pl um, the plastic off and then put all the cells back through the charges and the discharges and figure out which um, of the cells is causing the problem. So I suppose that leads us to the, the, the question, Add, um, maybe put some comments down below what you think I should do to try and problem solve this. What I've done in the short term is throw another pack in. Um, the problem with doing that uh, is obviously that pack is in a different uh, is out of balance to all the other packs in the power wall, so that creates a problem. So uh, the you know when this come, as soon as a, a fault occurs like this, the best thing to do is just turn the, have the power wall turned off or turn your your, your pack off uh, or your bank off and and then start figuring it out be before um, um, the voltages drop to you know zero like it is on this. Um, it would have been nice to to catch this at maybe three volts. Um, I suppose overall it's not going to make too much of a difference. But yeah. So anyway, that's um, a bit of an update. I've um, I've got a bit of work to, on my hands now to try and figure this one out. And um, yeah, leave some comments on what you think I should do below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.